Hello and welcome to our daily devotion from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm Pastor Adam Moline. Today we're going to continue our look at the life of King David, seeing how it is fulfilled ultimately in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Last week we heard how the ripple effect continued consequences for David's actions with Bathsheba played out in the life of his family. One of his sons slept with one of his daughters outside the bounds of marriage and then was angry about it when he felt the guilt of sin upon him. He sent her away. This made two of David's sons angry at one another. Absalom is angry at Amnon. We talked last week about how many of the things that take place reflect what took place with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. That idea continues today, so I'd continue to uh, encourage you to go back and look at the book of Genesis when Cain and Abel fought with one another, because much of what we see today reflects that as well. We begin in 2 Samuel chapter 13, verse 23. After two full years, Absalom had sheep shearers at Baal Hazor, which is near Ephraim, and Absalom invited all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold, your servant has sheep shearers. Please let the king and his servants go with your servant. But the king said to Absalom, No, my son, let us not all go, lest we be burdensome to you. He pressed him, but he would not go, but gave him his blessing. Then Absalom said, If not, please let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said to him, Why should he go with you? But Absalom pressed him until he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Then Absalom commanded his servants, Mark when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say to you, Strike Amnon, then kill him. Do not fear, have I not commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. So the servants of Absalom did to Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and each mounted his mule and fled. While they were on their way, news came to David. Absalom has struck down all the king's sons, and not one of them is left. Then the king arose and tore his garments and lay on the earth, and all his servants who were standing by tore their garments. But Jonadab, the son of Shemaiah, David's brother, said, Lord, let not my lord suppose that they have killed all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon alone is dead. For by the command of Absalom, this has been determined from the day he violated his sister Tamar. Now, therefore, let not my lord the king so take it to heart as to suppose that all the king's sons are dead, for Amnon alone is dead. But Absalom fled, and the young man who kept the watch lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, many people were coming from the road behind him by the side of the mountain. And Jonadab said to the king, Behold, the king's sons have come, as your servants said, so it has come about. And as soon as he had finished speaking, behold, the king's sons came and lifted up their voice and wept. And the king also and all his servants wept very bitterly. But Absalom fled and went to Talmai, the son of Amihud, king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son day after day. So Absalom fled and went to Geshur and was there three years. And the spirit of the king longed to go out to Absalom because he was com comforted about Amnon since he was dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, you hear in that particular text how one brother kills his other brother. And at first we may think it even is a just retribution for what took place, what Amnon did to Tamar. But you see how 
David's sin with Bathsheba now reverberates through his family. Son killing son. This is going to even escalate even further in the future as we continue to read about David's life. There will be tremendously serious consequences for all of these things, all stemming from David's actions with Bathsheba. It was this way all the way since the very beginning. Cain and Abel fought with one another, and in fact, the very first death of a human in this world was the death of Abel as he was murdered by his brother Cain, out of jealousy, out of anger. Why? Because Abel believed in God and his promises, while Cain struggled in doubt. Thereby, Cain was jealous and had his brother or killed his brother himself. Dear friends in Christ, our sins also reverberate. We also have consequences for our sins. Sometimes those consequences seem to be just. Sometimes they seem to be unjust. But they're there all the same. We see in our children the very sins that we ourselves have committed. We see how they are unaware often of the sin that they commit, as it is painfully obvious to us from when we committed those sins. Dear friends in Christ, that sin is across the board. Through one man, Adam, sin entered our world. And from the time of Adam, even until now, death has reigned as a result. For the wages of sin is death. All of us have sinned. We see the sin continuing in generation after generation of our world. There's only one solution, dear friends in Christ. That solution is Jesus, who bore our sin on the cross, who died for it once for all, who, by his death and glorious resurrection, makes all things in this world right. Now, that's the ultimate solution for your sin and my sin. And it's the ultimate solution for Absalom's sin of murder, for Amnon's sin of rape, for David's sin of adultery. It's the solution even for Cain's sin of murder from Abel. I think that's where, too, there's a great blessing that is given to Cain, even after he has murdered his brother. God marks him in such a way as no man will ever kill him in retribution. Dear friends in Christ, God marks you as well in the waters of holy baptism. He places the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. We remember that mark that's been placed on us by the Lord every time we say the invocation, every time we do the benediction by making the sign of the cross as a remembrance of what God has done for us. It's a remembrance of our baptism. We're going to see in the future then, dear friends, how Absalom's sin is not yet over. And there's actually a hint of it already in this particular text. Absalom wanted not just the king's sons to go out sheep shearing. He wanted also the king himself, David, to come. Is that because Absalom wanted to kill both David, his father, and his brother Amnon? We'll see in the future how it's very likely that that's the case. Perhaps he's angry with his father for not carrying out this retribution himself. This will escalate. It will become worse. But no sin is too big for our Lord to forgive. No sin is too big to be placed on the shoulders of Christ. No sin is so big that it ultimately will keep you from God's kingdom unless that sin is rejecting Christ, his word, his gifts, 
and his blessings. Christ overcomes all. He makes things new. He puts right what we have made wrong. That's God's promise to you, to me, and to all. In the name of Jesus, amen.